We were working on specification problems previously. We talked a little bit about functional forms. We talked about omitted variables. Let's talk about dummies. Uh, the models discussed in this section are variants of analysis. The variance models discussed earlier. We didn't actually do analysis of variance, but I think most of you have seen simple analysis, one-way analysis of variance. Some of you have seen two-way analysis of variance in your other classes. There's really not much, there's not a lot of difference between regression analysis and analysis of variance. You can turn any analysis of variance problem into a regression model. If it's a one-way analysis of variance, you use in your regression model the variable of interest. Call that the dependent variable. So it could be the uh, could be, for example, the mean dissolution time of an aspirin in a glass of water, and you have two different coatings on the aspirin. Well, in your regression value, there at a regression model, you have data on dissolution times. And on the right-hand side, you have a dummy variable that represented the categorical uh, allocation of the pills between the two different coatings. And so the analysis of variance problem is very simple regression problem. The same thing works with two-way analysis of variance. For each of the different, for the, for the group and treatment effects, now you need two right-hand side dummy variables that take a value of zero if they're a part of the group and one otherwise. A value of zero if they're not in the treatment or if they get the treatment or a value of one if they don't. Okay, so regression analysis uh, is just ANOVA is regression analysis using categorical variables on the right hand side. So we didn't miss anything by not spending a lot of time on it or any time on it. So let's talk about dummy variables and we'll think about a specific example again. And we have earnings data on workers who can be divided into those who are in the union and those who are not. This is, an, this is a question that interests economists. They're always fascinated by the impact of unions on wages. When you look out across the whole landscape, do unions make a difference in terms of the earnings of their members? If you lived in Detroit, what would you say at this point? Uh, they had some kind of special deal with Temple Hospital where they didn't have to use straight union labor all the way. But there was a really special deal that they got into with the labor unions. Also, our data set includes people with college and those without. Uh, some are not females and some are married females. Some are not female and some are single female. And so we're making it, if it's a woman, we make a distinction between married and not, otherwise they're male. And we don't make a distinction between married and not married males. Uh, so we have a regression model. Uh, we have another explanatory variable, x, but maybe is age. When people do these kinds of studies in empirical economics, they like to include age because they think that explains a lot of earnings. So the most general model is one that's fully saturated. It has all of the dummy variables. When you're using your dummy variables, you have to make sure that the sum of the dummy variables uh, doesn't result in a column of ones. That's, you can't even allow to do that. So you want to make sure that there's some dummy variable class that is going to cause things not to add to a column of ones. And our restricted model is the one with nothing on the right hand side. Yes, Mark. Is that why you had the, the, the three before being like female and married and female? Say that again? Is that why you had the three before? Yeah, so I left out the male dummy variable. Regardless, like you needed the that before that to validate all Oh no, I included D4s because there are some people that uh, if I didn't include D4, then single females would get lumped in with males. And I don't want that. So implicit in that set of four dummy variables is one that says male or not. But if, let's say if you didn't have the, you need that D4 though, because if you just had D3, you could have a column of one. No. If I, had, if I did not have D4, then female women would be lumped in with males. Because what does D3 say? It says we drew, some, we have a barrel of, of people, and I drew Laura out of it. And uh, 
I look at her and I observe that she's a female. And I then ask, are you married? And she, <laughs> and she says no. So for her observation on D3, I score a zero. And then I go and I draw another sample, another observation out of the barrel. And it happens to be Frank. And I look at Frank and I observe that uh, with regard to D3, he's not a female. So I score him a zero. So according to D3, forget D4, run it away. I also scored a zero for Laura. Because I only see D3. Well, I'm putting together a column of zeros and one, and I want to make sure that everybody gets, for D1, everybody gets either a zero or a one. And so Frank's a member of the union and you're not. And then D2 says column or no column. And so we can assign everybody uniquely to that one. People can be female or not female. People can be married and not married. If we include a W variable for each cell, if we had a whole bunch of W variables, then uh, when I pick up a, an observation, each observation is, can be assigned to only one cell or the other. And by virtue of the cells being mutually exclusive, suppose I had four observations. I had somebody who's female and married. I had somebody who's married and not a female. Somebody who's not married and a female. And somebody who's not married and not female. So those are my four observations. So for the first person, oh, and I include four W variables. So let's put them. Let's use a different character so that in the notes you don't confuse them. I'm going to construct D0, D1, D2, and delta 3. So delta 0 gets a 1 if the person is in the upper left cell and 0 otherwise. So the first person I drew was the person who was married and a female. The next person I drew, I said, was married, but not a female. And so they get a 0, 1, 0, 0. And then the third person was down here, and they got a 0, a 0, a 1, and a 0. And then the last person was down here, that's a 0, a 0, and a 1. When you add those four columns together, those are my four W variables, when you add the four together, you get a column of 1s. And so I want to avoid that. Now, for the purposes of what we have here, we have uh, we have people who are not female. So the distinction is between a married female and somebody who falls in the first column. Okay, so suppose I got. Basically, you don't want everything to be mutually exclusive. Excuse me. So you don't want everything to be mutually exclusive. I want to make sure that the dummy variable structure that I set up doesn't add to a column of ones, and it shouldn't be possible. It could be. I, I, don't, I don't want to agree too quickly with you because it could be that we have a single female who's a member of a union, right? So those are two groups that are not mutually exclusive. So I'm saying within each dummy variable. Oh, yeah. You can't get both a zero and a one. Um, so you could, if you could have D1, D2, D3 there without connecting. Oh, let me try it again. Suppose I had on the left, you need to have suppose on the left I had another, another variable. Oh, well, I can't, I can't even imagine it. So if the case of D3, and you say you pick lower out of the cell, the two points, so you scored her, you scored her a... What, I'm, what I was trying to do with D3 and D4... Is make it so that you don't have a column. ...was set up that. There, I'm saying that I want to make a distinction between married and not married females, but I don't want to make the corresponding distinction amongst not females. So in order to capture the three cells, I need two dummy variables. A dummy variable that takes the value of 1 if it's a married female, and 0 otherwise. A dummy variable that takes a value of 1 if it's a single female, and 0 otherwise. And I need something that takes a value of 1 if they're not a female. And sentence. So in that scenario, if you use three dummy variables, then you will get the column of 1. Right. To find the right. So you basically want to have one less dummy variable than category. Right. You need one less dummy variable than you have categories. So when we had the full saturated table, two by two, I had four dummy variables, and the four, when I added the four of them up, I got a column of ones. So I would have to drop out one of the four dummy variables. When I have three categories, married female, not married female, and not female, I really only need two dummy variables. And so the two that I picked were these two. The zero and the one are logical constants. But uh, it's a logical statement in whatever software you're using. True, it gets a one. Not true, it gets a zero.